Good afternoon, it's three o'clock and I welcome you to the Gaming in Germany webinar, Market and Regulatory Update. My name is Willem van Holst. In today's webinar, we will take a look at the situation regarding Germany's regulated online market. On July 1st of this year, the Gemeinsame Glücksspielbehörde der Länder, the GGL, Germany's new national regulator, became responsible for combating illegal gambling offers and associated advertising. But what else is new? Our aim for us today is to give you a quick 30 minute update on the current regulatory situation. But of course, there's only so much we can do in one webinar. If you would like more information, please consider attending our upcoming Gaming in Germany conference. This year's edition will take place one month from now, on September 19, in the afternoon and 20th, the whole day, at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Berlin. We have several exciting speakers, including the co-chairs of the GGL, Ronald Benter and Benjamin Schwanger. Also, René Janssen, chair of the Netherlands Gambling Authority, has agreed to join and panel with the GGL leadership, with Birgitte Sand, former Danish regulator, to compare lessons learned from the German, Dutch, and Danish market openings. We also have Nadja Wieszewski, head of enforcement at the GGL, as well as Robert müller oetz and Felix Schleif of the Landesverwaltungsamt Sachsen-Anhalt to discuss enforcement responsible gaming requirements, and Lucas. In short, we've got a lot of expertise and I think there will be a lot of relevant information as well as a chance to meet the decision makers. However, let's return to today's webinar for now. Before we kick off today's webinar, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our strategic partners and sponsors. Without their invaluable support, we would not be able to do this. Thank you very much. As always, our webinars are interactive. If you would like to ask questions to our speakers, please make use of the Slido app that we use. In order to do so, please scan the QR code on your screen that you see here, or visit slido.com and enter the event code GIG. That's GIG, hashtag GIG. And select the Q&A tab on the top of the screen to submit your questions. We will try to answer as many audience questions as possible towards the end of this webinar. With us today, we welcome two expert speakers, and I'm very pleased to have them here in the online studio, so to say. To give us a much needed update on the current regulatory situation in Germany, we have with us Dr. Jörg Hoffmann, head of the Gaming and Betting Law Practice Group at Melfast Law. Welcome, Jörg, how are you? Very well. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you, Jörg. And our other speaker is Roger redfern Tierzek, Director of Global Gaming at ID Now. Roger, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. And uh, also, uh, you know, thanks a lot for the invite and having me here today. Welcome to both of you. Before we ask Dr. Jörg Hoffman to walk us through the latest regulatory developments and issues, we will have a short sponsored contribution from Roger, who represents our long-term partner and KYC solutions provider, IDNA. Hi Roger, and again, thank you for being here. Uh, I have two quick questions from you uh, today here. So first, could you please briefly walk us through the customer ID verification requirements that Germany licensed operators must adhere to? And also, what are the obligations of compliant operators? Of course, yeah. So, I mean, there is essentially two really big words that you have to keep in mind, and uh, and that is um, GVG, which is the German AML uh, law uh, that uh, we fall under, and also uh, the KJM, which is the Commission für Jugendmedienschutz, uh, which also um, approves and also governs um, some of the um, solutions that are being used by the operators in Germany. Now, <clears throat> obviously, with those two in mind, um, you have a very kind of different approach really to identity verification because as we know um germany is probably one of the highest regulated you know my you know countries we have in europe whether that is uh, in financial services or whether that is on the gambling side as well um it falls on to on the very very strict um regulations and um if we just look um, briefly at the gvg so which uh, then kind of <clears throat> which you have to fall under 
um, let's say BaFin, um, let's say instructions where you have to do a video verification that also helps with, uh, with social engineering. Um, and also at the same time, uh, you can also do an EID verification, which, uh, which can be done with the German national ID. However, the uptake on that is very low and uh, just because you have to remember a six digit pin and um, it's quite uh, it's quite cumbersome really to get your head around. I mean, obviously, once you have done all of this, it's, it is very, very easy because it is automated. However, still um, to this date, the most preferred solution when it comes to those um, BaFin regulations is the video verification. Now, when we look an example at the at the KJM, it allows you know further verification methods, which we're used to in markets like, an example, the UK, um, or also in other regulated markets um, such as Ontario. Now, those automated solutions really give you the competitive edge as an operator because you know you're not bound to speak face to face with an example a person, um, and you also you know prepare better for peak times. Um, so those automated um, you know, solutions, they really help operators to deal with high spikes, you know, when there is really big sporting events on an example, when Bayern München is playing Dortmund or when there is a World Cup on or, or Euro Cup or whatever it might be. So um, there is two different approaches which are allowed. And um, as of now, all of the operators are using both of those approaches as well, as far as, I, as, far as we can see in the market as well. It's very useful, useful information. So, Roger, you mentioned two permitted KYC solutions. What do you think are the benefits and drawbacks of each solution? And which solution do you think players prefer? Um, I think from the data that we can see, especially um, on the solutions um, that we provide, also, you know, we can see in the market that. Um, you know, players really prefer the option of the automated solutions because um, it gives you the the possibility to do your verification anywhere and at any time as well. Um, and it's just a lot quicker, right? So if we look an example of the time difference, a video verification on average um, would, would probably take between, you know, three and a half to four minutes, somewhere around that. And the automated solutions, they, you know, you can pretty much breeze through within, you know, 20 to 25 seconds um, when you obviously scan your document and then you also do a selfie. Or you could, in example, let's say, do um, a method which is also liked by players where um, you would, in example, do a transaction into your bank account, an example, a one cent, uh, you know, transaction, and it would, an example, have a pin and uh, for that pin then to be put into... Um, into the website to, you know, to fully register. So, and then with the video verification, as I just said, I mean, of course, this is the, you know, probably one of the safest ones. So if we look at, I mean, saying safest ones, I mean, it's just obviously where, where we're kind of talking about, you know, social engineering. I mean, a automated solution won't be as good in picking out an example if someone else is in the room and if someone is making you, you know, to do the verification for someone else, um, then, then, you know, our agents uh, or, or in fact, I'm, I mean, obviously any agents of any solution um, provider will pick this up uh, because they're very highly trained people um, who do this on a daily basis uh, and a lot of times as well. Um, and then with the EID, which, um, you know, again, is, is, a, is a really good way of using NFC that we have nowadays in Android and obviously Apple phones um, to read, uh, you know, the information out of out of the German national ID and to really provide a very um, a very good base. But you know, from what we can see right now at this moment in time, the automated solutions are are, are, are definitely prepared because you know you can do the verification twenty four seven and it doesn't matter if someone is there to pick up you know your video call or not. Um, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's essentially how it works. And, and, in, you know, percentage wise, I would probably say that, um, around about, you know, 70 to 80% are actually, um, choosing to go with the automated verification and then the rest with the video. And what we have to say here though, is, is that it somehow can be a good way as well, because you are really, um, you know, looking at inclusivity, right? You know, you're giving everyone the chance, you know, to, to, you know, to verify yourself. So if you might not be really good, 
with a smartphone or with any device whatsoever with a camera, you can just basically speak to someone who will guide you through that process and who will help you to verify yourself. Um, but yeah, 100% uh, the automated verification solutions are the most preferred option by German players. Okay. Great. That's actually very uh, practical and very clear information here, Roger. So um, we're moving on to, to Jörg here, but please do note everybody at home. And I think we have about 120 people in the webinar now, some people entering the webinar now, as uh, we see. Uh, Roger will be available to answer audience questions during the Q&A at the end of this webinar. So Roger, please stay put for the Q&A and uh, see you in a minute. Thank you very much. No problem. So with this, we've arrived at the main part of today's webinar, where we ask Germany's leading gambling lawyer, Jörg Hoffmann, um, head of gaming and betting practice at Melchers Law, um, to answer some questions for the audience here today. Jörg, welcome again. How are you? Thank you very much. Still good, Willem. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. You know, the burning question, as always, is um, where do we stand with licensing for virtual slots, gaming, online poker, and sports betting? Please tell us the news. Yeah, well, I think you all recall that the license uh, application proceedings, they started in July last year. And there's still a lot of operators, of applicants waiting to get a license. So what's, what's happening? Uh, the current stage is as follows. You can look it up by uh, reviewing the current bite list, which is published by the uh, gaming regulators. And uh, as of um, 19th of August, we have um, 34 sports betting licenses being granted to operators, which you may consider is subject to the responsibility of the regional council in Darmstadt. Everything related to sports betting, until the end of this year uh, is um, handled by this authority in Hesse. Everything else, and then we are talking about virtual slot machines and online poker for the licensing regime lies within the responsibility of the state administrative office in saxony anhalt and this is where the licensing proceeding started first july last year for the new licenses in particular for slots for virtual slot machines uh, up to now only eight operators were listed as being granted with the license in such white list that does not mean that there are more approvals available for licenses but obviously it takes some time from receiving the letter which says the gambling committee, which makes the final decision on either granting or not granting the license, uh, has finally approved that you will get it. Um, there are a few requirements which operators need to provide and to fulfill. One is, of course, providing the uh, security, which could be a bank guarantee in the amount of at least 5 million euros. And uh, only it's been, refer been, been confirmed that this security has been provided. Uh, you will get the written document, the paper, which shows this is your license. Sometimes it takes some time. Sometimes probably operators need more time than expected. Uh, also, you need to get a second license, which is the permission of games. Uh, that's different to other jurisdictions, and that's different to uh, the licensing regime under the previous interstate treaty for sports betting here. Uh, it's a double permission system. You get the license to operate and to broker, and you also get the license to um, offer your games. Every single game must be approved. This does not uh, happen by way of certification, uh, certain standards and apply them. Every single application needs to be checked, and then you get your license, a second license for that games which you apply to offer. But that can take even more time then, and uh, that might explain why we have some delays. For the time being, I guess there's more than 10 applications which are ready to, to be granted with a license. Could be more or less, I don't have uh, actual figures. For online poker, so far you wouldn't find a name on the whitelist at the moment, uh, although we know that it's just a matter of time and uh, first operators uh, will be listed in there, at least will have the approval to get uh, an online poker license. Um, we, only, we, we also need to uh, consider that there is uh, um, 
there are two licensing regimes concerned to sport, concerning sports betting. The first one started in 2020, which was the original one, where these 15 first licenses were granted in October, followed by others. There are still some operators who applied under the old regime that have not got their licenses until now. So they're waiting for the first license, which then needs to be, ex needs to be um, extended for the second period, because as of um, January next year, every operator, may he be licensed or not for sports betting, needs to operate under a new license. So the second licensing regime is the one that starts in July last year. And this is the renewal or the um, um, amending of the license. You get a new one, which will then last uh, the standard period time for five years. This keeps the authority very busy in, in, uh, in, in Hesse. And uh, the problem is, and that takes, uh, that's the reason for some delays, they do not have the full staff capacity available. Uh, they really need to handle this uh, in, 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 in time uh, because new tasks were given to that authority. There's a lot of responsibility in dealing with OISIS matters, the whole conference, the full, full correspondence with players. Uh, we started in, in July last year. Before that, um, the operators were corresponding with players having issues with the Oargus player bearing system, which takes a lot of time. And then, of course, there's this discussion with uh, better types, um, which the new catalog of permissible bets uh, causes trouble in the industry, a lot of concerns, a lot of development, and uh, that takes all the time they need. So we have to be patient and see that it will all be done in the course of this year. That's a very, very useful information. You need a lot of uh, high in information density here, uh, Jörg, thank you. In the meantime, quick reminder uh, for everybody at home, if you'd like to submit a question to Jörg or Roger, please scan the QR code on the screen and uh, get your question ready. You can also upvote. If you see an interesting question that somebody else asked, upvote somebody else's question. And all these audience questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. And moving on to the next question to you, Jörg. As of July 1st, the GGL has become responsible for enforcement measures. Now, next year, the new regulator will become responsible for licensing. What changes will this bring? Well, that's a very important question, and it matters a lot. The GGL stands for the uh, Gemeinsame Glücksspielbehörde der Länder, that's the German term, and it's the Joint Gambling Authority of the Länder. It's also based in Halle, and it will take over the overall responsibility for gaining regulation, supervision, and licensing of all these verticals as of 1st January next year. But in the meantime, uh, on uh, the 1st of July, they took over the full responsibility for enforcement against illegal gaming, advertising for illegal gaming, participating in illegal games of chance, one word, fighting the black market, of course. And this is done uh, very aggressively now. They put together a concept. They have certain tools of enforcement. One is IP blocking, the other one is payment service provider, but either payment blocking, of course. Uh, they could also impose criminal sanctions or at least start criminal investigations. The two co-chairs of the authority consider to establish a um, specially focused um, public prosecutor's office, probably in Saxony and as well, which is centralized dealing with illegal gaming. And of course, the administrative tools such as uh, interdiction orders uh, lie within the capacity of this scope of um, enforcement means by that authority. But what does it mean? Uh, before that, we have a variety of uh, responsibilities. To name an example, payment blocking uh, was subject to the competence of the Ministry of the Inter Internal Affairs in Lower Saxony. It's now taken over by the GGL and they're contacting the, the industry uh, asking for cooperation. Same applies to companies who could do IP blocking. Uh, the willingness of that company is uh, just to respond and say, yes, we're doing this uh, upon request is, of course, very low. There are certain issues. There are some legal issues to be discussed. Uh, this is something that needs to be developed. But it's a very important challenge for that um, authority because they need to, to, to deliver success. Because if they don't, 
the black market will be too strong. Uh, there are so many restrictions uh, the license operators have to deal with, more than challenging, including the high tax rates for virtual slots. The whole tax rate is 5.0 nominative, effective it's 5.0, 30, 5.3, 5.03, it's the effective tax. That's way too high for the virtual slot industry. Uh, considering the other restrictions uh, in, in comparison to the competitors of black market operators. So for our, it needs to be monitored and uh, evaluated, uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later. Um, there is a white list in place now, which is currently updated. And this white list tells you uh, where, which operator is listed, is, is, is licensed, and which is not. If you're not on the white list, you're deemed illegal, of course, if you're operating games of chance in Germany, serving customers in Germany. Uh, I think as of next year, this will be a proper system for those who like to know, is this one an operator I can trust because it's licensed and supervised or not, for instance, players or B2B partners. But at the moment, we have a very critical uh, category, which is those co operators are still waiting for the license, but have pending license applications. And the white list did not provide for any sort of category. And that leads to a, a, a conflict because there are some payment service provider or credit card companies considering to shut off um, those operators who are not white listers, probably as of 1st of September, because they say uh, our compliance department tells us we need to do so because this is the new benchmark, white list. So we did some research for those who are still waiting for their license. And we also found a release, a, a comment of the co-chairs in the press release most recently in, in August saying, we're now practicing enforcement against the illegal industry, against those operators who are not willing to comply, to ask for a license and who have not complied. I would say this is kind of a solution to learn and to understand that those who are seriously uh, conducting their, pen, their, their pending applications, not being rejected and not withdrawn their license applications, are still on the same compliance level until the license will be granted. It's a matter of time. And finally, to get this confirmed, we received um, corresponding advice from the authority. You can look at the circular resolution of, the, of September 20, which forms the basis for the transitional regime. And it says even beyond that 30th of June, which is the end of the previous interstate treaty, when it out of force, um, this transitional regime should apply until the GGL takes over full responsibility. And that will be 1st of January next year. So for all these payment providers outside, I would say you can treat those with pending applications almost equally to those who are listed on the white list. And, uh, these payment service providers, they have agreements with their B2B partners and they know exactly which status they have so they can inform them on a daily basis. And I think that would solve this problem. Yeah, a lot of changes and, and challenges as a result of that. And thank you for summarizing those, uh, Jörg. Really, really useful. So the third and last question to you today is, so what are the remaining challenges? What solutions? Could be considered for these challenges and yeah and then especially to be very practical for operators how long will it take before there is more clarity for operators yeah well, there are a lot of challenges of course i will just pick up some of these very few one of these challenges which is subject to many discussions is the lugas system lugas is, is operated by the it department of the authority in halle as well and uh, lucas can be distinguished in, in uh, three categories first we have the activity files which should avoid parallel gaming and we have the deposit limit file system which should make sure that players can only play um, so much can only deposit so much money as the limit allows them to do so the standard limit for every player is a maximum of one thousand euro per player per month this could be risen to up to uh, 30,000 for sports betting by way of approval in that licenses which were granted. Uh, 10,000 and 30,000 are the, the standard tiers which, which were granted and approved by the Regional Council in Darmstadt for the old licenses. And then we have the safe server, the safe server, the world, which should be ready next year, but which will certainly cause some delay because I guess the IT structure is not ready uh, as of yet. And there's no technical guidance uh, published um, up to now. 
Uh, I think in the near future, this should happen. It's still under final development. And we learned from IT experts that it is not possible to, um, to, to program the whole thing until uh, this uh, guidance, these technical uh, guidelines are released. And from then on, you probably need six to eight months uh, to program this. I think the, um, the authority understands this and the IT department is in communication with the industry to talk about possible um, extensions of deadlines. Um, I'm confident that this will happen and we learned that they're really communicative and the, the responsible people in, um, in Saxony are not dealing with the industry. They're really very supportive. They are very responsive. And I must say we're making excellent experiences. So many things changed to the better when uh, we compared to the first weeks and months when the authority was about to build up its own structure. They learned a lot, they've got experience, and they're willing to do the best to get these things done. And I think the communication is the most important thing for all of this. So I guess uh, the safe server technology will be an issue. For the time being, we are talking about the deposit limit. Uh, at the moment, the deposit limit uh, is only can only be exempted from regarding sports betting for virtual slots. It's set for 1,000. Upon request, the GGL can allow a higher sports setting. In my view, it would make sense to uh, fix the same um, limit for one player. So if it's got 30,000 sports betting, it would make sense uh, to grant him a lower limit, and it would make things complicated. And how could you how could you uh, check this. Um, currently, the Lucas deposit limit system is not able to check uh, limits and deposits going beyond 1,000 euro. That's for technical region. Uh, above 1,000 euro for sports bidding, it's an uh, operator based limit, but not a cross operator limit as it is designed for. So there are still some things under construction which need to be fixed probably early next year. Um, uh, that is a discussion, and also the discussion is how high could these limits be? Um, we will see. The, this lies within the responsibility of the GGL, of course. Um, that is technical issues. In practical terms, I think the issue and the challenge is the long duration of licensing, license application proceedings. I mentioned before that uh, there are still some operators waiting for their first license, and there are many operators who applied for a virtual slot machine license and delivered their application documents in, in July or close to July and still waiting. One of the reasons why this takes long uh, is apart from the fact that the authority needs time during the first three months to get these things sorted and to build up the infrastructure internally, is of course that the authority cannot make that final decision. They complete the application proceeding and then they can make a final suggestion and bring this to the gambling committee, a group of 16 regulators, each regulator representing one of the German lenders, so that's why it's 16. And they need a majority vote of two thirds. And experience shows it's hard to get these majority votes. So it can be postponed from one meeting, usually monthly meeting to another one. And there's follow-up questions. Uh, it's, it's, it's not very pleasant that what happens here. And it's also a burden for the regulators who are in charge, who reviewed all these documents uh, to be dependent on that sort of gremium, uh, which can, uh, Say yes or no. It just it just depends and uh, causes a lot of trouble, a lot of questions, and a lot of legal in uncertainty. Um, it is different with sports betting. Same situation. Final decision by the gambling committee. But sports betting, we have these two proceedings, and uh, the industry is concerned whether the renewal of the license or the granting of the new and second license uh, will be completed, will be done by the end of this year, because uh, as of 1st of January, the old one is expanded the day before. You won't have a legal basis to operate games of chance legally in Germany. So there is a cause of action, there is need of action. And the um, Richard Council told me um, upon request that they are optimistic to get this done. And in particular, because there's one issue taken off from their burden, which is the decision on the deposit limit exemption. In the old days, this was the decision of the Regional Council. This is not officially confirmed, but allegedly it looks like Darmstadt will only grant the 1,000 euro deposit limit exemption within that new license. If that is true, it would mean that the GGL would take over making this decision. My understanding, GGL can only make a decision after 1st of January 
on this matter because they are taking over responsibility only as of 1st of January. So that would be a gap. This would be a disastrous situation for the industry, only being able to accept 1,000 euros deposit per month. And so far, I guess there is a need for communication, for immediate communication between the trade associations and the regulators, probably, of course, the, the applicants, operators, to get this solved. Otherwise, uh, this would be a not um, channeling into the wrong direction, into the black market direction. So we need an interim legal basis or clarification on this point before the end, uh, before the end of, of this year. Or as a last resort, the industry will have to go to the court again and seek legal protection by way of litigation, which of course nobody wants. But if that is left as a last solution, I don't see any alternative. Yeah. Thank you, Jörg. Some, some really helpful information, some uncertainty, but also uh, a possible solutions that you mentioned there. I'm, I'm very interested to see how these things all uh, develop. So before we move now to the audience Q&A, a final quick reminder to everybody at home, please engage with uh, our experts here. Uh, scan quickly the QR code in Slido and submit your question uh, through the Slido app or go to the slido.com website, enter the event code, hashtag GIG, uh, select the Q&A tab, put your question or upvote somebody else's question. So with over 100 attendees here, very pleased uh, this afternoon and welcome for those who just joined us. Let's see and let's have a look at the audience questions. The first question we're getting in from Slido is, and that's pointing to Jörg. Jörg, what do you see as the single biggest challenge right now for operators who are still waiting on their license? Meaning operators who applied for a license and have not seen the license delivered, granted. Yeah. Uh, the biggest challenge is to get it in time. Uh, if it's a sports betting license, then of course it needed to be granted uh, before uh, the end of this year. And if it's a license um, applied for virtual slot machines, I think the same applies. You will have to use your license and it's, 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 it's communicating with your server to make sure there's nothing else left from your end to deliver meaning documents, meaning um, the certificates or whatever, and, and make sure it works. And uh, sometimes there are follow-up requests, and sometimes there are follow-up requests regarding compliance, because there might be a sister company offering probably a legal game of chance in another jurisdiction or in, in Germany, and things need to be sorted out. Uh, very often they can be sorted out, and uh, this should also be handled as soon as possible. My advice is whenever there is an issue regarding timing, regarding content or whatever, the best way is take the phone and contact your case handler or contact one of the um, well, those representatives of the Landesverwaltungsamt, the state administrator of it, discuss these things transparently. That saves a lot of time and they're willing to help. We made that experience, they are supportive, they want to help you. And if you don't have to fear that something breaks away because there is a background which is not proper, then I think this is the way to proceed. Yeah, okay, challenge, but also possible solution there. Thank you, Jörg, really useful. Let's move to the next question from the audience here. You can still upvote or post your questions in the Slido app. Roger, here for you. How do you optimize user onboarding across multiple jurisdictions? I wish I would have an easy answer to this, but uh, it's, it's. Um, <clears throat> I mean, to be honest, um, you know, you'd probably obviously have to have, you know, the, you know, the right team of people, you know, that know a little bit uh, of background uh, on, on, on multiple markets. Uh, I mean, obviously it's, it's incredibly important that you have the right, uh, you know, suppliers that can help you um, with multiple jurisdictions because it's not sustainable to have, let's say, yeah. a supplier for a single market, an example. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, uh, you, you definitely need someone obviously who, who, who can help you in multiple markets. Um, and then really is to, you know, to work with, uh, you know, people like, uh, like Jörg, uh, to, to, to make sure that, you know, from a legal perspective, everything's, uh, everything's all right too. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. Quite clear. Let's see if there's another question here for our experts. Let's look at Slido here. 
I guess that's uh, looking at you. It's, it's a detailed question here. Could you give update on the status of challenges against the Luca Central file system? Something that you also referred to in the second question. And what point would an operator be able to challenge that? We know that some regulator, that's sorry, some operators decided to challenge Lugas by way of litigation. Others refrained from that and say we, we do not want to start litigation here. I think one of the main points for Lugas is not that technical difficulties and delays I spoke about recent, uh, most recently, but uh, I think it's the data protection issue, uh, which is um, subject to the the most. To the, the majority of discussions, and that is an unsolved problem. In particular, Article uh, 26 of the Data Protection Guidelines, where you have to uh, define the responsibility of the parties um, being contracted with each other. Here is the operator and the authority, and the way the agreement is designed does not suffice, does not uh, meet these requirements. But in order to get a license and in order to get the suggestion that uh, your application was taken to the Glückspiel Collegium, the gambling committee, you needed to sign this agreement. So now, for those who have got a license already, the question arises, what how do I have to do? Am I taking the risk of um, a lot of very, very high fines because I'm infringing against data protection law or can we resolve this? Um, I know that there are discussions between the regulator and the industry just now uh, to discuss if there is a solution uh, that is not um, necessarily uh, leading into litigation. We don't have any results so far. It's, um, it's a communication that started. We know that the yeah. gambling committee shows a position saying we don't want to discuss this. It, it, leaves, it should leave like it is. Uh, and, uh, and so far, probably, finally, it will be the courts. And then we have to see. But hopefully, uh, we can fix this just by discussing it with the regulator. Thank you, Jörg. Uh, Lord Lucas, the discussion here, uh, very useful. Let's see if there's a, a last question or two quick last questions. Yeah, so uh, reflection here, Jörg. What is your impression of the GGL, its leadership? It's, it's, it's early days though, and the room for independent maneuver. <laughs> yeah, I like the independent maneuver. For me, independent maneuver would be making final decisions, making decisions on their own and not be dependent from um, a group of people like the Glückspiel Collegium, which, by the way, is only uh, active until the end of this year, then it will be replaced by a state administrative, uh, sorry, administrative board, which is on a higher political level, sending representatives of each land. Um, I think at the moment they're building up this authority, they're trying to hire people, they're trying to find their new responsibilities and new positions. Uh, in my view, we have two co-chairs, and I think it's a good combination. We have Roland Benta, who is an experienced regulator from Schleswig Holstein. He understands this industry, the issues. He regulated and licensed the industry in Schleswig Holstein for many, many years. And uh, Benjamin Schwanke from Hamburg he is more focused on enforcement. That is what he's done in the in the past, uh, and this is, I think, um, the focus he's doing at the moment. If you talk to both of them or hear them talk in public, uh, Mr. Schmanke always, that's my impression, prefers to speak on what's possible for enforcement and when they start it. Um, probably Mr. Banter is the one who is dealing with the more regulatory focused uh, issues. And finally, of course, they would do it together. I would say we should give them some time. We should have them matured because they need to fight for the power they need to make this 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 mission um, a successful one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's um, that, that's very interesting background to hear, Jörg. Um, time for the last question here. So we have thirty nine minutes past the hour. Uh, we have an attendee called Robin. Hello, Robin. Could you elaborate on the process for game certification as game provider in the German market, and Jörg? Um, Please keep very it short. shortly, uh, very briefly. Yes, uh, we don't have uh, B2B licensing, so uh, and no certification of these games uh, that you can uh, refer to a standard and say my game is certified. Everybody can use it. Uh, the games were reviewed and tested uh, as part of the application 
photo license um, done by the license by the by the operator, of course. So, um, in order to design games for the German market, you have to be familiar with the requirements, the technical and regulatory requirements, uh, as they are partly mentioned in the industry treaty and uh, in, in its guidelines, uh, and make sure it's fully compliant. You can contact the authority and have them checked. Um, this is what they do, and they uh, review the applications for games. And then um, these games will be mentioned in the operator's license as being approved and being permitted. But it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's what the law says. Uh, if the next operator is coming and um, ask for approval of the same games, same release number, same random generator number, it will be a separate process. Uh, and uh, they are going to, the regulators are going to grant the permission again separately for the same game. And so far, you need to know what uh, to be considered, and then you won't get your own license for that game, no certification. Of course, uh, the only thing that needs to be certified, and that's really the only thing, is the random generator. That needs to be certified by one of the uh, established test labs, and that's what you Another four coming up uh, there and some bottlenecks uh, for the industry. Robin, that was a good question. Jörg Roger, I want to thank you for your participation today, your insight, your answers, uh, and I hope to see you in person uh, soon in Berlin. Um, see you all in Berlin. Of course, as I mentioned before, sorry, yes, thank you. Thank you. As I mentioned before, there will be more to discuss at the next month gaming in Germany conference. Lucas, definitely a big topic uh, there. If you want to hear directly from the leadership of the GGL and other experienced regulators, as well as other major industry representatives, don't miss it. See you in Berlin and we hope to see you all uh, there. With this, we've come to the end of this Gaming in Germany webinar. I hope you find it useful. A link to a full recording of today's webinar for you or your colleagues will be shared in a post-webinar email. It will be sent out as soon as possible. And as always, keep in touch. If you have not signed up for free newsletters or print magazines, just uh, dropped on uh, many your doormats, please do so at the internet address www.gamingin.eu. That's gamingin.eu. I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.